we're finishing it. We're continuing on. We're beginning again. We're starting all over. Either way, it's always a good day if you can take the time to not just pray, but to have conversation, to have communication, to be able to say to someone else, you know, I was talking to the Lord, you know, and He kind of was telling me that I needed to repent. <laughs> How often do you hear that happen? But the reality should be that's the way Jesus spoke when He talked about His Father. Now, he wanted us to be able to do the same, so he died and rose again so we could. But what we need to do is to open up our ears, open our eyes, and find that place and time where we would spend it with God. Because he is more than willing to spend it with us. The law of the Spirit. Behold, God my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song. Yes, he has become my salvation. Isaiah 12.2 Life is not just one long party. There will be and always be hard things and easy things mixed together in the events of your life. Regardless of what today brings, you can still have joy in the Lord. And what joy will give you strength to handle whatever comes your way on any given day. But you must spend that time with the Lord. When you follow Jesus, the law of the spirit of life keeps you free to enjoy yourself because you can cast your burdens on the Lord. See Romans 8 2. God will lead you to know what to do and he will energize you to do what needs to be done. And he will enable you to be able to do what needs to be done and to get done. You won't feel drained by life, but will grow through both the trials and the triumphs as you walk with God today, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. But you see, it's not just simply a automatic process that goes on, though God is working in you, but it is something that you recognize as he does for you those things that you'll remember that are personal between you and him alone that you took the time today to say Lord you know I got here's my bills <laughs> and here's my job like empty hands and I don't see the two meeting so God I'm just gonna have to give you the bills because I don't get the money and you know God respects that. God honors that. God meets that. And whether you succeed in paying the bills or you wind up on the street, God still provides. He does. He takes care of you. You may not think so the first time you've ever wound up on the street, but, you know, some of us have been there and we've experienced, you know, or I have, you know, I've experienced where I chose to be not in a house and put on my backpack and stuck my rucksack in it and headed out the door and had my tent and had my canteen and on my way with my thumb in my Bible and straws to cordis or whatever I had and I was on my way and no matter what happened God took care of me and it was wonderful I loved it it was simple as a matter of fact it's a lot simpler than today but in every situation, whether it be in, in success, as you succeed in the way that you go, or whether it be in setbacks, where you suddenly find yourself in financial turmoil and you don't know what to do, the simple reality is God says, hey, I'm here. I will lead. I will guide. But we have to seek Him. Because if we don't, you can go about what you think you ought to do, and what you want to do and what you're going to do but the way of salvation is pretty simple it's just simply trusting in the Lord with all your heart you don't lean into your own understanding in all your ways and that means in every financial in every 
business opportunity in every word, in every deed, in every thought, in every action, in every relationship, in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He directs you. It's, it doesn't get any more blunt than that. It's, do you want to look it up? It's Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It sounds silly. It sounds goofy. It sounds like it can't work. I mean, obviously, if God created the universe, He can't take care of me. <laughs> okay. I see. You think that he just created the universe and took off on a vacation and the rest of it is like he'll show up at the end, right? <laughs> Did you know that there was a president who actually thought that? John F. Kennedy. Yeah, he basically thought of God as being distant and that we were here to make our own choices and to do our own thing and that he didn't intervene. I know a lot of people that may not directly believe that, but by their actions, they do it. So for you, if you pursue a personal relationship with God and you want to know Him more intimately, if you want Him to be more, to be more real in your life, then you have to be more real with God. He's either a dead, unhearing, unliving, unresponsive God, or He's the living God. And you can know Him today as easily as you can know Him tomorrow. The simple thing Jesus said is, come unto me. It's pretty simple. You start talking to Jesus, and guess what? He'll start talking to you. You start walking with Jesus, and guess what? He'll start walking with you. You start asking Jesus what you need to do, and he'll start showing you what he did and what he said to do. To be born again is about as easy as it gets. It's going to cost your life because you're going to give up everything that you own, everything that you have, everything that you are in order to find out one thing and one thing alone. God is real and he means what he says. So it's your choice. If you have your bills, like I said, on the one hand and you have no job on the other hand or you have your circumstances on the one hand and you don't know what to do on the other, hey, guess what? Lots of people find themselves there. But the joy of the Lord that comes to those Christians that commit their way unto the Lord isn't that they always know what to do, but they know where to go for the answer. <laughs> and it's a lot simpler than you think.